Will Robinson here from Robinson's Auto, toolsandtime.com. Welcome back. Today in the shop we have a 96 GMC with a 5.7. Customer complaint is that it's running a little rich. Check engine lights on. So let's start by grabbing the code, see what we got, and then we can dig a little deeper. Let's get started. Okay, we have some data showing up here on the left. We have a P0172, System 2 Rich, Bank 1. P0175, System 2 Rich, Bank 2. P0305, Cylinder 5, Misfire Detected. Coolant temp is 127. So um, if you look at that short-term fuel trim on Bank 1, she was really pulling fuel away. This is showing a pretty rich condition. Okay, here's a shot of Auto Ingenuity's live data meter. I just use this to give you a clearer reference. But if you take note here at the short-term fuel trim, this should be right around zero on a good engine, running engine, plus or minus. Now what you see here is a minus 28.7, 26.5. That's just a tremendous amount of fuel the computer's trying to pull away. When you see a negative, it's trying to pull fuel away. Positive, it's adding it. So what you're seeing here is a super rich condition. The vehicle is trying to pull fuel away. And with numbers this high, the computer's trying. It's just not able to correct it. I just wanted to give you this as a reference. Whenever you get a condition where it's running this rich, even though I didn't like the way the bank one sensor was responding, it's still showing a rich condition. It's trying to pull away fuel on a fuel trim, but yet it's still running rich and it's showing it running rich. And I can smell it. It's, it's evident that it's running rich. So I start looking for unmetered fuel. Why am I getting a condition? Why am I getting this rich condition? On this particular 5.7, they use what they call a spider injection. What I'm expecting is that there's something going on in there and the fuel pressure regulator is located under that upper intake. So I believe we probably have a bad metering assembly or a bad fuel pressure regulator, maybe even a hose that, one of the tubes that came off an injector. However, we gotta dig in and uh, try troubleshooting this a little bit further. So I'm gonna open this up I'm just going to take, remove this air cleaner box and um, see if I can see anything down the throttle body. I started taking this loose earlier. I'll just get this whole assembly out of my way. Actually, let me get a regular screwdriver. I was going to monitor the mass airflow too, and I did off camera. It seems to be reading accurate. I might clean it. Anyhow, but it's evident that we got a very rich condition. The computer's trying to correct it. However, I believe we have unmetered fuel going from somewhere. Yeah. See, when you look down there, I can smell the raw fuel. This should be pretty dry down here, guys. The tubes go into the ports, so you shouldn't see anything wet. And I'm already seeing. I'm already seeing raw fuel. That's not a good sign. Well, let me put my mirror in there so we can see anything. Oh, yeah, it's all washed out in the back. Yeah, smell the raw fuel. Yeah, guys, I believe I found our problem. I'm going to have to pull this upper intake off and give you a closer look. I won't be able to get you down inside with the camera I got. However, uh, I can see the raw fuel sitting down there and it's got everything washed out. So we have something going on in that spider injection. So um, let's dig a little deeper. All right, guys, what I'm going to start by doing is just unplugging all the electrical connections straightforward and um, you just got to take off this upper intake this plastic portion of the intake so um, I just want to start by throttle by TPS idle air 
surround cable. Okay. All right, let's remove the bracket for the surround cables. Sorry, I don't have time to give you a real detailed video on this one. However, it's pretty straightforward to be honest with you. The PVC valve. So you can just remove that whole thing. We're gonna have to take and relieve the fuel pressure here shortly. You know, I think it already relieved itself inside. All right, let me give you a closer shot before I go too far. As you can see, I just took and unplugged all the wire harness, removed all the vacuum lines that might have been in the way, removed the throttle cables and the bracket. Now we're going to take and start removing all the retaining bolts around the perimeter. That one's a nut. Now when the whole stud came out, you want to keep track of everything, guys. This will all come out in one piece. I'm not too concerned about that bracket, to be honest with you. the side like so just to get it out. Now I'll pull this back line. Over here. Get that out of my way. You can see what I'm doing guys. I'm just trying to make room. Pull the intake. That's all we need to do. Next I'm going to take and remove the fuel lines. You can relieve the fuel pressure from right back here. You just open this up. You see it reveals a straighter, straighter valve. We'll just check it real quick. See how there's no fuel pressure there? I could already tell it probably leaked all down into the intake because I could smell it. But I just want to verify that. It's best to hook up a fuel pressure relief hose up to that and blow it into a, a jug. But my suspicions already told me that they were, um, that was all bled off into the intake already. It's best to use a socket and ratchet on something like that, guys. Probably the hardest task you're going to have to face to this part is removing the, the fuel lines in the back. I don't know if you get a shot back there, but if you follow those steel lines back, there's uh, two nuts they're um five eighths on the line side going down and three quarter that you'd hold on this side I don't know if you can see that there hide it down below it's easier if you take and remove these four wires and then you can take and uh remove the the fuel lines This will allow you to get to that last remaining bolt for the upper intake. Okay, I think we got it. Now remember, there's an O-ring in here. It's pretty tight pulling out. But as you can see, we can take and move the upper intake now. Let's take and try to pry up on it a little bit. Get that to pop. I'm going to show you what the main culprit is here and a lot of times this is what I find on these vehicles when you have unmetered fuel as you can see that's why they call it a spider injection it kind of resembles a spider you know you have your fuel lines that go to the ports for each cylinder and right here off to the side is your fuel pressure regulator valve 
usually on most common motors it's on the outside of the engine and you have a vacuum hose going to that fuel pressure regulator okay there's a diaphragm in there if that diaphragm goes bad it'll suck fuel into the vacuum hose however as you can see there's no vacuum hose hooked up to this fuel pressure regulator valve and that's simply because it's surrounded by vacuum if you think about it guys what's going on under that upper intake in between those two portions you're surrounded by vacuum therefore you don't need a vacuum hose hooked up to that regulator because it's constantly in a vacuum it's submerged in vacuum so as you can see the surrounding area is all carboned up except for underneath that fuel pressure regulator and everything behind it now sometimes you'll have a leaky tube and you'll see something similar near a cylinder and it'll cause a misfire or in a, a rich condition on on another cylinder because it's it's spraying unmetered to the wrong cylinder but in this case what I could see was going on with the mirror it's vaporized now but when I first looked in there was a little puddle of fuel and it was all a little wet here but as you've seen on the scanner the engine was getting warm so the gas has vaporized in the time it took us to remove that upper intake maybe with a little luck I get that thing to drip a little bit of gas out for me and see as you can see there you shouldn't have any gas on that side of your fuel pressure regulator valve that should be strictly vacuum you can see it's all wet around this outer portion this should be dry on this side of your fuel pressure regulator valve there's a diaphragm in there and what happens is you get a hole in that diaphragm and it sucks unmetered fuel gas throughout the engine and creates a rich condition that the engine management system can't control so now we're going to take and remove this fuel injection setup as you can see you got your fuel lines pretty much you just pinch these like so and you pop them out you do that to all eight of them and then this bracket you pretty much pry this and it pops up out So you can take and turn these lines. So I'll get it out. There you have it. There's the spider. Hey guys, I just want to give you a shot of this old one. As you can see, it uses what they call poppet valves at the end of each one of these plastic lines. And this is a central fuel injection system. We'll be doing the conversion to multiple fuel injection system. So this is the upgrade and it's a, supposed to be a more reliable setup and what they're uh, selling in place of the poppet style. Alright, so let's install it. Carefully turn your plastic lines so we get it into the bracket like we removed it. If you take notice on the side of the assembly you have the firing order or the injector order so this is one three four and two flip it over i'm not sure if you can see it but this is seven five six and eight so if we take a look at the instructions here you can see how cylinder two and go like this which is the first line and four is the next one so the lines are going to have to cross so I'll put it just like they showed there. I'm going to put in number two down low and then cross it with number four and just follow that pattern. Alrighty, so it clips in there like so. So we got number twos first here two, four, three, and one. You always find your number one cylinder by it's the cylinder closest to you. So over here is cylinder one. So cylinder two. Take that. Just like that popped in, like so. Number four. Okay, you want the electrical connections facing towards the center of the manifold. 
That's two, four. If you look on a manifold, they're also numbered as well. So the next one back is six. I want to orientate it just the way it shows here. Number eight going in first. Is the first one. This is number eight. I'm going to be careful not to kink the lines. So, let me show number eight going in just like so. Okay, let's go in for a closer shot so you can see what the finished result looks like. As you can see, number two cylinder went in first. Then number four, and you come over here, number one went under, number three went above, come to the back, you got number eight, and number six went over, five and seven, as you can see, seven went under, and five went above. I'll give you a shot back there. And everything's plugged in tight. Notice how all the electrical connections are aiming in towards the center of the intake. You don't want anything to interfere with the contact surface of the upper plenum. So therefore you gotta turn all the connections in. Otherwise it's gonna give you a hard time when you're putting it back together. But that's pretty much all there is to it guys. You got it clipped in place, all the injectors are ran, and it's pretty much plug and play. Okay, everything's cleaned up. I put a little lube around that O-ring so it slides together a little easier.